Okay, so if we if we now look at the expressions for the transitions between states one and two, and then one and four, we we find that we have this uh, prefactor here um, squared, and then we do the two integrals. The integrals are very similar, except for in the state from one to two, we go from the ground state wave function, which is a cosine, uh, to the first excited state it equals two. So we have a sine two pi x. Whereas in the one to four transition, we have the same initial state, but then the, the final state is uh, n equals four, so we have a four there. Okay, so that's the difference. And when we calculate the two integrals, we find that they're similar. Um, here we have uh, this uh, constant factor times 16L over nine pi squared, and that whole thing is squared. And then here from state one, uh, between states one and four, we have uh, 32L over 225 pi squared, and that whole thing is squared. And if you take the ratio of the probability uh, for a transition between state one and two, divided by uh, the, tra the probability for transition between states one and four, we find that the, the transition between state one and two is 156 times more likely. And so this basically justifies the approximation we made earlier in the lecture, where if you recall, we, um, we basically by graphically examining the um, x times psi one of x times psi one, which looked very much like um, psi two, that is the first excited state of the unperturbed Hamiltonian. We basically guessed that the uh, that the uh, perturbation, uh, the application of the electric field, was inducing a transition from state one to state two, um, and we said this is an approximation because x times cosine of x, that is x times sine one, is not exactly equal to um, uh, psi two, but uh, they're 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 very similar, and this basically justifies that uh, that approximation. Okay, so let's close the lecture with just a few notes. In this example, we we saw that the transition between states of the same parity, that is odd to odd or even to even, um, is equal to zero. And these these transitions are called forbidden transitions. Um, they're not necessarily strictly forbidden. This perturbation theory is an approximation, so that these transitions. Uh, the, tra the probability for these transitions may not be strictly null, that is, it may not, not be strictly zero, but the probability for these uh, forbidden transitions should be much smaller than the um, allowed, than that for the allowed transitions, okay? So for, uh, so for the transitions between states of, of opposite parities, opposite parity. We also, uh, uh, if, if you, we calculated the the probability for upward transitions from one to two and from one to four, um, but the uh, perturbation could also induce um, downward transitions. Okay, so we can go from two to one or from four to one, for example. And um, when the transition is downward, um, we can have we have uh, something called stimulated emission. So stimulated emission is at the heart of laser action. Okay, and in fact. The word laser stands for light amplified by stimulated emission of radiation. So the very acronym that we use for laser implies stimulated emission. And so uh, this is uh, what happens when you have a, uh, a perturbation, an electric field, an electromagnetic field, uh, which um, is applied to a system which is already in an excited state. That is not, it's not in the ground state, so that downward transitions are possible and that perturbation induces a downward transition and that uh, is called stimulated emission. Now we can also have spontaneous emission if the state is initially in an excited state, not in the ground state, um, then the, we know that the system returns eventually to the lowest possible energy state, the ground state, and it does so also by per a perturbation, but that perturbation is not, doesn't necessarily have to be externally applied that is, it's not necessarily an electric field, which um, which is which is applied uh, sort of on purpose, um, but it in fact can arise from so-called vacuum fluctuations, uh, which are um, flu energy fluctuations which exist even in in a vacuum, and uh, and these are described by the field of quantum electrodynamics, which if you go on in physics, you'll study more of.